Hello, I'm Mrs. Jansen, and today we're going to create a school of fish together. Let's look at this school of fish. Notice that all these fish don't look exactly the same. Notice that they have different shapes, different colors, and some of these look like they may even be different types of fish. Let's start with vocabulary. Our first vocabulary word is overlap. This means to extend one object over part of another object. Let's look at the photograph behind our vocabulary words. We're looking at a school of fish. Notice how one fish overlaps another fish or covers part of another fish. Our next vocabulary word is organic shape. This is a shape that is found in nature. It is very different than a geometric shape. An organic shape has unpredictable edges. For example, it can be the shape of an animal, a bird, or a sea creature. It can even be the shape of plants, rocks, mountains, and more. Our last vocabulary word today is repetition. A recurring or repeating shape, line, color, object or thing, subject, person or animal within a work of art. The artist that influences our art today is Robert Wyland. He lives in Laguna, California. He inspires people to think about the importance of caring for marine life and the habitat they live in. He has created 100 large outdoor murals that he calls whaling walls. These murals often contain life-size whales. He also creates sculptures. I'm sure you've already noticed the Disney characters. Robert Wylan works with Disney to help teach conservation and has their permission to include Disney characters with his original artwork. He is a writer as well as a film and music producer. So now it's time for us to draw our school of fish together. As always, you'll need your imagination, a piece of paper, and a pencil. You'll also need crayons for later. You will see my screen change so that we can draw together. Remember in art, we have what we call paper styles and that defines the direction that our art is in. If our paper or art is turned horizontally, across it's called landscape style and that's the direction we're going to work in today so turn your paper landscape style and the first thing we're going to do about the center of your paper is draw our first organic circle remember it's organic because it's a circle in nature and let's shade it in with our pencil Now let's add a second organic circle around the first one. The next thing we're going to do about a finger space away in front of the eye is add a curved line goes above the eye and across our paper it's a curved line like a rainbow 
And with this line, we're deciding the size of our fish. Now let's go to the beginning of that curved line and add a diagonal line. And at the end of this diagonal line, let's add a second one. And this might remind you of a sideways letter V. I'm going to go to the beginning of this diagonal line and add a curved line and continue that curved line to the center of that V. Now I'm going to go to the end of this diagonal line and add a curved line that goes up. And I'm going to continue this curved line to the center of that V. Now we finish the mouth and as you draw more fish, you can draw the mouths in different ways. I'm going to go to the bottom lip or the bottom of the mouth and next I'm going to add a curve line like a smile. I'm going to continue so that I get close to around the same place that I ended that top curve line like a rainbow. I've got the size of my fish and the next thing I'm going to do is go to the top of the fish and add a curve line like a rainbow to create the top fin. At the end of this curve line, I'm going to add a curve line that goes back to the main part of the fish. Now I'm going to go to the bottom of the fish and I'm going to add a curve line like a smile. At the end of this curve line, I'm going to add another curve line that goes back to the body of the fish. The fins do not have to look exactly the same. Let's add a tail. I'm going to go to the top curve line that was drawn like a rainbow and now at the end of this I'm going to add a small curve line like a smile. And then let's go to the bottom curve line that was like a smile. Remember at the end I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to add a curve line like a rainbow. Now I'm going to go back to the top one and I'm going to add to this curve line and everyone can draw the tail in different ways, however you'd like. So now we need to add texture. Let's add texture to the upper fin, the top fin, and the lower fin, the bottom fin. Artists use different lines and marks to create texture. So you can add whatever lines and marks you'd like on your fish. And you can use different lines and marks on the upper fin, the lower fin, and then the tail. All the texture marks that you use do not have to look exactly the same. So now that we've drawn uh, our fish, when I look at my fish, I think it looks flat. It looks two-dimensional. It has width and it has length or height. So I'd like it to have form and have the illusion of three-dimensional form. I'm going to use a curved line. So I'm going to stop, start at the top and add a curved line on the body. And this will help make my fish look more rounded. About a finger space away, I'm going to add another curve line. And this creates a stripe. So you can add as many stripes as you would like to your fish. You want to make sure that you've got about a finger space away or in between your curved line so that you've got room to add color in the stripe 
or you've got room to add lines or shapes to create a pattern. It's up to you how many stripes you add on each fish. And you don't have to add them all the same. So when you finish drawing your first fish, now it's time to think about the second fish. You can start above it or below it. Every time you start a fish, the first thing you start with is that small organic circle. After that first circle, remember you draw a second circle around it. We're going to go about a finger space away from the eye and we're gonna start a curve like a rainbow. Remember as we draw this, we're deciding how large our fish is going to be. And now I'm gonna go back to the beginning of that curve line and I'm gonna add that diagonal line that goes down and a second diagonal line to create the mouth. Go back to the beginning of the diagonal line, add a curve line, and then continue it to the middle of that sideways letter B. Go to the end of this diagonal line, add a curve line up, and continue that to the center. Now let's go to the bottom of the mouth or the lip and add a curve line like a smile. And remember when you get to something you've already drawn, always pick up your pencil. Let's go to the top of our fish and add a curve line like a rainbow. And at the end of this, add a curve line that goes back to the body of the fish. I'm gonna add the texture. Now we do not have to draw the bottom of this fish or the bottom of the fin. Let's think about the tail. I'm gonna to go to the end of this curve and add a small curve like a smile, and I'm gonna continue that line to create the tail. Remember across from that small curve like a smile, I'm gonna add a small curve that looks like a rainbow. So this shows me the line that I need to continue for the body of the fish, and I can pick it up when I get to the upper fin of the first one, and now I'm going to continue the tail. Remember, everybody's is going to look different, and that's one of the best things about art. So let's now go back inside this tail and add texture with any lines or marks that you'd like. And now let's add some stripes using curved lines. Remember to pick up your pencil. If you come to something you've already drawn, so we've got two fish drawn, and let's add a third fish. We're always starting with that small organic circle and shading it in, that larger one on the outside. Now I drew two fish of different sizes and I think I'm gonna add a third fish in a different size again. So about a finger space away in the front. Let's start with that curve like a rainbow and remember to pick it up when you come to something you've already drawn. Let's go to the beginning of that line and add that diagonal line that goes down and the second one like that letter B. Add that small curved line, continue it to the center. Go to the end of this diagonal line on the bottom, add a curved line that goes up and continue it to the center. Let's go to the bottom of the mouth and add that 
curved line like a smile. And I'm gonna continue it till I get to something I've already drawn. I'm gonna go back to the top of this fish and add a curved line like a rainbow. And I'm picking it up when I get to something I've drawn and I'm gonna add the texture in this upper fin. Now I'm going to go to the bottom of the fish and add a curved line like a smile. And at the end of that curved line, I'm going to bring it back to the body. I'm going to add the texture in this fin. I'm going to think about this tail. What would it look like? I think that I would see part of the tail. So I'm going to imagine that it would have that opposite curve like a rainbow and that the tail would start about here. And then I'm going to bring the tail back. I'm going to imagine that it would continue behind that fin and I'm going to continue it on the other side. Now I'm going to add texture inside that tail. And let's add the stripes to this fish. Remember, we're about a finger space away. So I know you've got great ideas. You're going to continue to add more fish. They can all look different. They can even swim in different directions. And let's look at this finished example. You're going to notice that this grouping of fish has fish that are different sizes, have different colors, the stripes are different, and sometimes you see shapes and lines to create patterns. It's up to you what colors you use for your fish. If you'd like to, you don't have to, but if you'd like to, you can include seaweed at the bottom. And in those open spaces, you may want to add bubbles. Depending upon how large the space is, you may even have room to draw another fish. I know you've got great ideas, and it was great to make art with you today. I'm going to review with you where in your, your art you see the vocabulary words. We used overlap several times. Some of our fish cover other fish. We also used repetition. We repeated the lines and the shapes we use to draw the fish. We also repeated the fish. Lastly, I want you to remember organic shape. The organic shapes we use to create this fish and the shape of the fish are very different than geometric shapes. The edges are unpredictable. After you've colored your fish, now I'd like you to color the water or the background. The background includes the space on both sides of the fish and the empty space in between the fish. If you'd like the sea or the ocean or the water to look really wide, move your crayon horizontally. Remember there's different pressures that you can apply with your crayon, light or heavy, you can even add what's called blending, one color on top of another. You're going to see in the water, I created blending with different blues. So have fun using your imagination and your own ideas as you complete your school of fish. I look forward to making art with you again soon.